in the news, skinheads attacked immigrants in Germany, Sweden, Holland, Spain, and France, race riots in South Africa, India, and Canada, angry mobs attacking mutants in The New Mutants, ethnic fighting erupts between aliens and humans in War of the Worlds, and charges of discrimination were raised by the Quadis in Falling Free. But first, Anne flees planet and ends up lost in space. Film at 11. Anti-Semitism in Eastern Europe. Here's a vote and the English only sign. 40,000 tons of oil with PCBs blew up the ozone layer today. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Prisoners of Gravity, this is Commander Rick. It wasn't until 1966 in Fantastic Four number 52 that the first black superhero appeared, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's The Black Panther. Six years after that, Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, a cheesy Shaft ripoff, became the first black character with his own title. A year later, in 73, The Black Panther got his own title too. Since then, the number of minorities in mainstream comics has, ooh, at least tripled to six. Still, the issue of racism is being addressed in comics, although it's usually as a metaphor. The X-Men face a lot of hostility because they're different. But recently, in The Whitest of the Whites, Superman, writer Louise Simonson took a more direct approach to the issue. There's overt racism and there's covert racism. And I think that even people who try not to be racist sort of instinctively slip into it whether they mean to or not a lot of times. Um, I think that as time progresses and as the world becomes a smaller place, that hopefully it will become less so. And did you want to hurry that process along with your story about the racism that was taking place in the Daily Planet's hiring practices? The reason I personally wanted to do it was we have a young friend of Hispanic background and he complained that in not just the Superman books, but in most of the superhero books, there everybody seems to be a white male. You know, there, there are few women and there are few other races represented. So I said, all right, John, I guess you're right. So John Vigdanov and I decided we wanted to do this scene. And of course, we discussed it with everybody else because that's what you do when you do the Superman titles. But it was decided that this would be a theme that would run throughout a number of the stories as a uh, subplot. And then they go kill Superman off. Mind you, Soup is being reincarnated in four new versions, one of whom is black. For a more realistic portrayal of racism, check out The Alternates. Love and Rockets by Jaime and Gilbert Hernandez features Hispanic characters. Art Spiegelman's Pulitzer Prize winning Mouse is a devastating look at anti-Semitism between Nazi cats and Jewish mice. And ever since New York comic legend Will Eisner began creating semi-autobiographical comics in the 70s, racism has been a returning theme in his work. Will, there's a remarkable scene into the heart of the storm in which you change your little brother's name to Peter because you don't want people to know he's Jewish. It's a true story. As a matter of fact, he's still called Pete, and he, he has to uh, put it in parentheses when he signs official documents because He's known as Pete. And it's a true story, yeah. You've really put racism in the spotlight since you started doing graphic novels. What do you think are the roots of the problem? As creatures, we're afraid of anything that looks or is different than we are. It's a threat. If we are white, uh, somebody whose skin is a different color is, is a foreign element, and foreign elements represent a problem or a danger and so forth. We have to consciously learn to accommodate ourselves to living with that. And it's a very subtle thing, and that was what attracted me uh, to it as a subject area, because in this medium, uh, it's very hard to deal with subtle things, because you're dealing with 
images uh, that uh, uh, solidify or condense an idea. Uh, and when you condense something like, like orange concentrate, it, it, it's, it's pretty solid stuff and doesn't allow itself for any subtlety. If you try to do any ethnic or, or racial or national group, there will be people who jump down your throat because you're doing a representation. And one of my favorite stupid letters, uh, and hopefully, since this is going to be on in Canada, the person who wrote this letter will hear this and know that I thought it was stupid. When I did Alpha Flight number one, Jim Hudson, guardian, comes, comes home from a tough day at the office, and his wife offers him a cup of tea. Let me make you a cup of tea. And I got this letter from this person tearing a strip off me because, damn it, we drink coffee in Canada, you know. I said, yeah, but we drink tea, too. You know, this isn't supposed to be definitive here. But they get off on these things, you know. We accumulate images of what we think people who are engaged in certain kinds of things look like. We learn to trust and not trust somebody based on stereotypical images. Those of us who are either in film or in comics or in the visual arts learn very early on to employ those visual uh, touchstones, if you will, to, to make our case. And we're doing using images. So I, I think the, the, um, uh, the reinforcement or the support or the proliferation of imagery, of, of stereotype uh, by the use of images is not the danger. I think the danger is how you use it, the way the Nazis did, who tried to create a, uh, an image of a Jew and began using it detrimentally, or the way uh, people in blacks did. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Alfred E. Newman, the, the uh, Mad Magazine character, was originally an anti-Semitic image. It, it was a, kind of an idiot Jew, was, was the idea. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's how it's used. Alfred E. Newman is used very nicely now. It's yeah. used kindly, in a way inoffensively, if you will. But Gilbert, you know comics thrive on stereotypes. So how do you subvert that with your material? Mm. I try to avoid uh, some of the, the, the stereotypes, which, you know, because after all, cliches and stereotypes are based on something. So I, I try to avoid, like, say, the machismo, the Hispanic culture, and try to emphasize uh, the, the, the female side of it. Uh, even though it's true, there is a mach machismo in, you know, culture. I just try to de-emphasize that just because we expect that. You know, I, I wanted to put in things about the Hispanic culture that you just didn't expect, like warmth, uh, <laughs> um, you know, friendliness, uh, just, just what, everybody, what everybody's culture goes through, you know. Right. Do you see yourself as a spokesperson for the Hispanic community in a way? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I just, I just basically tell stories I want to tell, and I think they're just they're coming from a different angle, uh, so I just think it's, it's, it's interesting that way. I mean, when most cartoonists say, well, I'm going to do a story from a different angle, it'll be about outer space, or it'll be about uh, somebody who turns into a plutonium man, or something like that. That's, that's okay, you know, when you're a kid, but how about telling a story from a different angle from people who really are here, what, you know, what's, what's, what the world is really like, and hopefully, uh, you know, ha having the reader warm up to these, these types of stories. Fear not, there is something new and exciting happening with mainstream superhero comics and with Dennis Cowan, one of the first black creators. Dennis penciled and co-plotted the Black Panther and drew the infamous lynching scene in The Question, issue 15. A few years ago, Dennis explained the situation facing creators of color. Comics is still... This is going to really get me in a lot of trouble, folks. Comics is still... Um... You know the, the white male white male club. You know, and uh, until more minorities do something to change that, you know, it's always going to be a white male club. You know, uh, yeah. as one of the few black creators of, of prominence at this point, that's going to change. At this point, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's my responsibility to do that as well as my desire. You know, time for Luke Cage here for hire. And I can name numerous other incidences is over. Um, so that's the thing I want to change. I think the only way you can change that is uh, if black creators 
women creators, minorities, you know, Chinese creators, gay creators, um, take control of their own projects. And hopefully through the mainstream companies like DC and Marvel, you know, get things, get product out there that would change people's perceptions.